Humans are relentless imitators. It's something that comes naturally to us. Well, most of us. Gabe is a 10-year-old Californian boy, and he's autistic. So my mom took me to a, a hospital, and they said that I have Asperger. Part of it um, um, is about um, I do very good, well in stuff like math. Um, but the other part is a type of, of a disability. Asperger syndrome is a relatively mild form of autism. But even so, Gabe finds it hard to cope with normal social situations. He doesn't seem to learn all the things that his peers learn just by being around each other. Just taking turns in a conversation, even playing, he just doesn't seem to get Sometimes I think the level of joy that other kids get out of uh, playing with each other, he, pr he, he definitely prefers to play alone. Autism is a deeply obscure disorder. Damage to almost every part of the brain has at one time or another been implicated as a cause. A new idea, and I think it's quite a good one, is that it has something to do with things called mirror neurons. Gabe, I'm going to put on the cap, OK? Here we go. Feel just like a baseball cap on you here. All right, looking good. the University of California, San Diego. Gabe has come here to have his brain waves analyzed. I don't have Asperger's, but I'm wired up too. Just keep opening and closing your hand until I tell you to stop. We start with a simple gesture. It's just a test of hand-eye coordination, one to which autists and non-autists have much the same neural response. But the interesting bit comes when we are asked to watch a video of the same action. Where for most people, doing and watching an action produce very similar brain waves, not so for Gabe. There's something wrong with his neural wiring. And rather amazingly, given the complexities of the brain, we may know just which neurons have gone wrong. They're called mirror neurons. Discovered only in the last decade, they are the neurons that fire whenever we watch or imitate an action. For you to imitate somebody, you have to adopt that person's vantage point. And enact the same scenario in your own brain. In other words, create a virtual reality environment of the other person's actions, even complicated actions, in your brain before you can execute them. In an autistic child, if you ask them to imitate somebody else's action, they have great difficulty because they're unable to put themselves in the other person's shoes. In other words, there was no mirror neuron activity. So we said maybe the key deficit in autistic children, the neural basis of autism, is a deficit in the mirror neuron system. The idea that mirror neurons may explain the workings of the autistic mind is an exciting one. But what about the rest of us who are not autistic? What do mirror neurons do for us? We use them whenever we copy other people. In effect, they allow us to blur the distinction between doing and watching. So when Californian cheerleaders practice a new routine, they rely on their mirror neurons being in perfect working order. Natalie's mirror neurons are firing in response to Onishay's, and Onishay's are firing in response to Natalie's. Kim's mirror neurons are firing too, and so are Tenny's. 
But what's really remarkable is that I'm just watching and my neurons are firing too. Mirror neurons will do for psychology what DNA did for biology. Open up a whole host of different questions and approaches to these questions that have remained the province of philosophy for thousands of years. Such as how do you emulate, what is imitation, questions of that nature which have remained very elusive.